Yeah, okay, anything visible there now? Check there. Excellent. Okay, uh, so this is the LibreOffice and native GTK widgets uh, talk. I think I'm a minute early, so I guess I'll wait till it ticks over. There it is now. So, um, back at the start, um, LibreOffice 6, uh, what we have at that point is uh, we do not have uh, a lot of native elements, but we have a small number of them. So we have the native file dialog, which we've had for years. Uh, at this stage, we have native tooltips, and we have native popovers. There's a little screenshot there of a demonstration popover of calc. Uh, the reason we have popovers at that point was simply because we needed to be able to display that calc feature and have tooltips at the same time. And GTK wasn't allowing you to have multiple tooltips visible at the same time which is what we were originally using uh, for the popovers. So split the two, uh, split the two things up. I uh, use popovers for, for this, uh, basically as a hack, and you keep the other two tips as two tips. Uh, at this stage then, we have managed to get the menu bar and menus to be native GTK ones as well, uh, brought over from the Ubuntu project's work there. So there's a couple of steps required to get all the way towards using the native widgets. The first one is uh, how are the dialogues and the rest of the user interface described in the first place and the file format for that. Then there's the issue about localization, the localization format, and then there's the issue of having some sort of an API that you can use um, to actually have uh, real GDK widgets used as um, BCL replacements. So we'll look at these in a uh, brief overview. Uh, so the first stage here, was in a couple of number of years ago, was to provide some sort of widget layout support to VCL itself. Uh, it's in that header there, and it gives you various uh, layout containers, a VCL grid, VCL box, all of which are modeled basically on the GDK equivalents. Uh, before that, we just have fixed placement of widgets. Each widget in a dialog is assigned a location and uh, a size, and it doesn't matter what the contents are or anything like that, it all has to be specified as hard-coded uh, numbers in SRC files, uh, which meant that uh, various difficulties with uh, languages that have long strings uh, would continuously uh, emerge and the dialogue would have to be manually uh, resized by the designer to fit the, the longest version of text. So the largest part, the largest problem really was converting over all these SRC files, all these hundreds and hundreds of um, dialogue descriptions over from this uh, hard-coded positioned uh, layout to this um, uh, GTK Builder UI definitions, dot UI files, uh, where we can define that things are uh, uh, the relationships between, between widgets in a far more dynamic way. This is a kind of a human process because the, um, the, the layout of all the dialogues, the, relationships there is something that's just determined visually by, by, by looking at them, not any actual uh, a structure that could be replicated into a, a more structured XML uh, destination file format. It was a large task, a uh, large number of volunteers, and uh, the output of all this then is that you have um, all of those dialogues redefined in the XML uh, GTK Builder file format. We have our own uh, .ui loader, file loader at that point, and you can use Glade then to, to edit these dialogues. So what we have is um, uh, a file format, the GDK file format, but we're using our own DCL widgets. Uh, then the other issue is the issue of localization. Um, something like GDK, most projects use GetText. Um, we, use, we used GetText as well as an intermediate file format uh, at that stage, but we didn't use GetText as the actual uh, file format that we stored the resulting translations in. So it's a good bit of work there again. Um, what we have at that point is that Boost comes with a get text, uh, dot .mo file uh, loader and an API you can use to, to get um, your localizations from that. Uh, 22,000 22, translation entries uh, were converted uh, at this point and uh, we were able to move a lot of um, uh, existing code out then and place it all with this Boost get text issue. Uh, a little plus along the way here is that we get plural form support, something that has been requested for a while. We got that for free. And then moving over to um, boost get tech support. What's this intermediate API then? This is the uh, infamous well thing. At uh, this stage, um, well, that's just the header file there. 
the, the basic process is that you use application create builder uh, you give it your .ui file and it returns back a builder from which you can um, attach yourself to the various widgets inside of that so you weld button uh, weld checkbox or whatever and depending on what platform you are you either um, return back gtk widget tree or the, the classic vcl widget tree so you only get your gtk widget tree uh, in the gtk tree port and for everything else you're still using the, the classic vcl widgets so um the api then um has to be something intermediate with something that uh, can so we can limit the use um, of gtk widgets just to the features that vcl supports and occasionally then you have to add stuff to vcl to bring it up to the same level of uh, support that gtk has in a particular area so it's a take away from one and add to the other uh, so uh, gtk tree views can can show arbitrary amount of columns and uh, issues uh, and, and features that um, the checkboxes columns are part that the vcl ones then are limited to um, one or two uh, checkbox columns and one image column so there's a lot of um, uh, there's less flexibility in some areas in the ETL widgets, so we have to uh, uh, bring ourselves down to that level. Now at 6.1, what mark do we have? We just converted over all the uh, message dialogues, mass converted them all over, so all message dialogues became native GTK ones. And then we have a handful of very, very simple dialogues, just a demonstration. It's basically, insert break is the uh, classic starting point for all of these. Um, <coughs> Moving on to 6.2, um, we have a, 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 a quite a large amount of dialogues converted to this point. 180 uh, generic dialogue controllers appear at this point. And the simple ones, simple dialogues. And then there's 41 tab dialogue controllers, which are the more complicated ones. This is former character, former paragraph, former page, issues like that. Um, because of this inter, uh, this step-by-step -step process, this incremental process, uh, we have issues that tab pages um, certain pages and dialogues are reused in multiple dialogues so they can appear in different dialogues. It's not possible to convert over all the dialogues um, to the new process in one step. So there has to be kind of an intermediate process where uh, a, a tab can figure out whether it's in a native dialogue or a BCL one and uh, 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 be generated from the appropriate builder. So it's a complicated scaffolding has to be constructed to allow this to be incrementally done. So here's what we have at 6.2 as an example dialogue. A character dialogue here is fully native, but no more emulation of the uh, GTK theme and the VCL, but actually using GTK directly for that. Now, multi level notebooks are uh, notably complicated. Uh, we have many uh, such tab dialogues or notebooks in uh, the office that have many, many, many tabs. So there has to be some sort of solution to deal with that and none of the built-in standard GTK solutions were, were considered uh, appropriate. So in the end, we ended up back with a uh, mechanism to create multi-level notebooks, but they're still uh, native GTK uh, notebooks, just manipulated to give us something that is more like the classic multi-step notebooks we had in the past. So from 6.2, we'll back to that again. 6.3, we're moving on. We now have 266 generic dialogues. Uh, 160 tab pages, and then we have 40 years of these more complicated uh, SFX tab dialogue ones. So at this stage we have a couple of pieces that are no longer being used directly at all. We put them into the attic, so the VCL tab dialogue is now um, never directly instantiated, but is only instantiated indirectly through this whole new structure. And the more button that's used in the expander and certain dialogues is also uh, fully wrapped. Now uh, what we have complicated in 6.3 are the calc range selected dialogues. They are typically modal dialogues initially and then when you click on the shrink or you click on uh, uh, the document behind they become modeless to allow you to select the range in the document in this calc document underneath and then you release the mouse and you just expand uh, back to modal dialogues again. These are uh, a rather tricky uh, construction but they start working in 6.3. Things like uh, full screen, uh, sorry, full, full semi almost application level dialogue, such as the country editor, uh, are fully converted over at this point as well. 
even more complicated things are beginning to arise. This is where we have um, uh, the calc header footer dialog has an edit engine hosted in, uh, in widgets, so it's a preview widgets there are, are very complicated. Uh, this begins to work in, in 6.3, but um, isn't fully working until 7.0 when it comes to um, being able to use an input engine and more complicated features like that to interact with the uh, edit engine uh, embedded, which it does uh, start to work at this point. Drag and drop, and that's in the pivot table where you can drag from one tree view to another to construct your document. This all has to be uh, put together as well. So that'll work there as well, but it works. 6.4, uh, we have now um, converted all of those tab pages, 170 plus of them, to the new scheme. So all that scaffolding I mentioned in previous versions can now be torn down again. And we're up to effectively 300 plus dialogues. This is nearly all of them at this point. And then there's a whole set of VCL widgets now that are being added to that list of things that are not being used directly. So there's no longer a direct use of the progress bar or image controls, and spin buttons are also um, an, an addict in that sense. And then the roadmap, which has been used in um, uh, uh, the assistance, is, is, is also wrapped. So here's 6.4, an example of that assistant. We're now up to uh, 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 using the GTK assistant directly when it comes to the wizards. Uh, so there's an example of one from the mail merge, also more notably in the uh, database intro dialogue as well. It's converted over. Now, 7.0, uh, our most recent one, there's a, 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 a no great change in the number of dialogues before we're beginning to um, uh, close in on the last uses of some of these widgets. So, again, the, the whole dialogue class itself is wrapped. We have completed all of the dialogues that are done at this stage, and all of the assistants are complete, and a whole set of um, uh, less common widgets are beginning to be added as well. Most notably here we have the SV header tab list box and the SV tab list box. Those are the, the most um, dramatic ones to be able to see moved out of common use. Uh, at this stage as well as the uh, all dialogues being complete with the important milestone, we begin to see a certain number of native elements in the toolbar sidebar as well. We'll go through those here now. So here um, a screenshot where in the 7.0 release Everything highlighted with that mauve or pink line is a native GTK element. The native menu bar is shown, but that's nothing special at this point. Done since 6.0. But here now we're beginning to host um, native GTK widgets uh, inside in the main window part of the CF at this point. On the sidebar, you can see that each block uh, is a native GTK top level container hosted within the VCL uh, window itself. So that there are one, two, three, three GTK panes there um, included inside three VCL windows. At the top then we've got the um, uh, toolbar area. We've got native GTK widgets appearing within the VCL toolbar. And then the whole rest of it then is one single, um, it's, it's all VCL, which itself then is one single top level GTK um, drawing area widget, but something that's like a true GTK drawing area widget. Uh, so, in one sense, it's all GTK within GTK, but it's GTK within VCL within GTK. Yeah, so, again, as I was saying earlier, that the uh, uh, VCL widgets can still be seen outside the GTK ones there. So, in the style example, you can see there's a little gear menu on the right hand side that's still a VCL one. And the style text and the drop down to the left are all VCL. But the two of them are coexisting. More examples then of what's native in GDK in 7.0 is that we have custom cell renders working. So we have a, a true GTK um, combo box on the left hand side, uh, there's a drop down, and then we have cell renders to allow us to do all those previews as we could originally do uh, the VCL ones as well. And then there's an overlay mechanism used to uh, produce that button. So we can have a, a button with a, a sub menu, a very, very non standard kind of a thing, can be achieved with uh, GTK as well. On the right hand side there, uh, we have a GTK tree view, uh, again, with custom cell renders, so we can show previews of the styles. And it's just an ordinary con uh, uh, screenshot of a base, and then in 7.0, we can see from the outline again, there's 
all of the contents and base are, are native GTK stuff. So all those outline things are, are, are converted over. So that actually means that all you've left at this point is just the CL status bar and the VCL2 bar itself. Yeah, so this is the incremental conversion uh, for these kind of embedded cases. So uh, if you look at that original base example there, uh, you take each one of those task windows where uh, task windows is database tasks and of course each one is a, one of them. Uh, it has using this interim item window, that's a VCL window which is allows you to put a GTK container inside of it. It also manages the stuff so by pressing tab, which you can tab between the widgets in it. And then when you get to the end and you press tab, it'll, it'll go to move over to the next container so that it's transparent as to whether or not you're in a VCL or a GTK widget when you move to the next one. Um, once each of those window contents is converted, initially here, then the next layer up can be converted. You can put your, uh, uh, the next level can be converted into an interim item window. And all the levels underneath it can be made into simple classes that don't need to do anything about that anymore. And as you go on, you incrementally move everything else up one layer, one layer at a time, until you end up with a single uh, interim item window instead of having multiple ones. So a single top level one there again. That's the process that has been done for base. So base is mostly done like that. And that process will have to be repeated for the sidebar here as well. So eventually we will move from having multiple item windows there to having a single item window. Uh, because it's a native GTK3 application effectively, um, you can run GTK, sorry, that's GTK, that's a type of uh, GTK debug interactive, and you can use a GTK inspector to investigate uh, the widgets. It allows you to have a look as to why something is the size it is, so you can change the values for widths and heights, or you can change whether it spans rows, uh, whether it has um, a, a span space or shrink or whatnot, and you can explore interactively uh, alternative layouts. In case here, I've just taken the opacity and I've changed the opacity of the um, GTK tree view inside in the sidebar to be less visible. Right, so uh, what's left to be done? Um, there's the calc input bar, and I've actually done that this week, that's completed now as well. It's particularly tricky there from some drag and drop aspects of that, but it works now as well. That gives you the uh, native GTK widget tree views in the uh, input bar. There's a relationship pane in base, which is rather complicated, where various widgets can be put on top of each other, so there's missing support for that, and that'll have to be added before we continue with that one. If you look over in writer, there's a bigger app bibliographic editor, which is a very, very complicated mix of the two different APIs already, direct use and DCL widgets, and then there's the, uh, uh, the you know, AWT APIs are in use as well, and freely converts one from the other. Uh, so that's uh, been left aside as a complicated final step. Uh, there's a start center, which was um, customly, uh, complexly, customly themed until recently, but again, Merrick has, has removed all that custom color using stuff so that's now a fine candidate to be converted over and I have a work in progress there that's looking quite good. Um, that's the start center. Yes and then as I said earlier you have all these panels each individual panel of content has been has been done with the actual panels themselves and then now need to be converted over and you can bring these little islands of, of interim item windows together uh, before you end up with just top level ones and completely. So yeah I think that's all I've got then. <laughs>